what's going on? I'm just uh, making a little trip into the city right now, but uh, I wanted to kind of let everybody know about how my weekend went. Um, you know, I took a little bit of time away from wrestling. Uh, I've had about a month off, uh, aside from one WFC event that I got called up to do. Uh, had a, a couple of cancellations due to illness and uh, a few, uh, I guess, uh, booking restraints or confusion, whatever it was. Anyway, somebody didn't make it to an event because they uh, were given the wrong uh, show date, and then uh, somebody else had a very, very, very serious uh, kidney stone infection, and I ended up going to do the uh, night two of the Ryder Cup in the middle of the month. And, uh, you know, it, it was kind of nice to get to go, you know, do a, a few matches. I ended up wrestling twice that night. Like, like I said in my previous video, I wasn't even supposed to wrestle that entire month. And I was just, you know, letting my body heal and uh, trying to just relax a little, little bit. And uh, Anyway, so at the end of the month, uh, my fiance and I, my best friend and his wife, Sam Stackhouse, Chelsea Stackhouse, we uh, made the trip to Las Vegas. Um, Sam and Chelsea, they drove so that they could go see the Hoover Dam and uh, they could go check out the Grand Canyon and see some of the sights on the way. I think he said they went through New Mexico, Arizona, worked their way over to Vegas. And um, uh, Danielle and I, we flew. We had a connecting flight from Dallas. And uh, it's actually kind of funny. I was watching uh, be, be, Being the Elite the other night and uh, the Young Bucks were at DFW the same day I was. That was kind of funny. It would have been neat to bump into them. But uh, just missed them by a few hours, but that's okay. Um, they were going completely different direction than I was, so we may have not even been close to each other if we were. But, um, so, you know, we, uh, landed in Vegas Thursday night, and, uh, we decided we wanted to just get in the car and go check out the light show. You know, we drove all the way up and down the strip, and, uh, you know, we went down Par Paradise Avenue, and, uh, pretty much saw, you know, all the big, bright, and beautiful lights, and uh, found ourselves a really nice uh, Korean barbecue place. We went in there and sat down and ate and spent a few hours in there just chilling and enjoying, you know, the fact that we were there. We made it to Nevada, and that's the furthest I've flown, you know, besides leaving the country. And, uh, man, it was just a great time. I, I can't think of one moment that I wasn't having a good time. And, uh, you know, we ended up getting back to the hotel pretty late that night. I think we all stayed up, had a few drinks, enjoyed the scenery, and, you know, walked around the, the hotel that we were staying in. We stayed in the West Gate. Uh, yeah, man. I mean, like, they had 24-hour tattoo shops and wedding chapels and, um, you know, open bars and casinos. I mean, there's no last call in Las Vegas. That shit's amazing. Um, ended up going back to the room and... Uh, you know, got a good night's sleep, ended up waking up in the morning, and then we decided to go ahead and get a uh, bus pass for the, the tram that they have there. They have a tram that's like a really fast train that will take you from one side of Vegas to the other within about eight minutes. I think they said there was seven stops, and they stop about every three minutes, so you can get all the way across Vegas in about 21 minutes if you need to. And uh, that was amazing. Uh, it was really cool, beautiful. You were able to see the sights from a whole different perspective. It took you through the city rather than just around it. That was cool. And, uh, I mean, we, we saw everything from Planet Hollywood to Paradise to the Flamingo to the, uh, the MGM Grand. We went to the fucking Luxor. Um, the, uh, the first night there we saw uh, this zombie burlesque show, which was an amazing amazing hilarious show just these beautiful women and these really funny guys there's one guy in the in the whole show he was like the star of the show his name was Mikey and uh he was a transitioning gay zombie you know coming out of the closet from the beginning you know he's dressed up real you know catholic schoolboy trying to be conservative and cover his clothes but he's having these really out moments where he's having <laughs> these outbursts of like just really gay stuff it was just really funny because it he was struggling with 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 coming out throughout the whole thing by the end of the show I mean he's dressed up like a flamingo <laughs> and he just got giant dicks on his shoulder and he's uh you know like zombies they eat people right and you know they're sitting there talking about eating brains and other organs and he ends up with a dildo in his hand and he's talking about you know what about this organ <laughs> 
it was funny shit, and, um, there was a, an obese nun, an obese topless nun that did stand-up comedy halfway through it, and, uh, that was fucking great, that might have been my favorite part of the whole show, uh, just because, uh, I mean, that little bit of entertainment, I mean, it might have been like an hour and a half show, it had everything, I mean, it was, it was funny, it was sexy, it was, uh, entertaining, it, 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 they had a storyline, like, the whole show carried on a story, the host was great, there was a really funny dude that was hosting the whole event, and he had to be the guy in charge of everything, because he, he knew what the fuck was going on, it was pretty cool, and as you can see, when I got home, allergies kicked in, because that Oklahoma air just was like, fuck you, but yeah, we did all that, and we probably walked, I think, uh, I think Dano's Fitbit said we walked about 12 miles on Friday, and then I don't even know what we walked on Saturday, but I'm sure it was just about as much. Um, we uh, ended up going to uh, see the Blue Man Group. The next, oh, I almost forgot, we went to Gordon Ramsay's Steak in Paris, Las Vegas. Uh, I had an 18 ounce uh, New York strip bone-in strip that was probably the tastiest thing I've ever eaten in my entire life. It was like a $68 steak, and it was worth every fucking dime. Um, man. <laughs> it was actually pretty funny, because when we got into Vegas, there was a bunch of people saying that uh, there were uh, spots available for a show in Las Vegas that Sam and I could have wrestled on, and both of us just kind of looked at each other and were like, fuck that, we don't want to wrestle. Don't want to fucking wrestle whatsoever. Uh, we were on vacation. And, and that was incredible. And uh, anyway, the next day, Sam was dead set on seeing the Blue Man Group. And uh, I haven't seen anything of them since I was in probably junior high. So I forgot about how incredibly entertaining those guys are, too. They're funny as fuck, and they don't say a word. And, um, you know, that was a good hour and a half show, too. And it was worth every dime. And uh, I'm glad Sam got to go. And I'm glad that, uh, you know, him influencing us to check it out was so easy because it was probably the, the second most entertaining show of the night and uh after that uh you know we got back on the train and we hauled ass back to uh our hotel the westgate hotel where we were comped a uh, a free show and we had upgraded rooms and all kinds of stuff they just i don't know they treated us really well we were supposed to be on like the fourth floor we got upgraded to the 24th floor when we got there and uh just, uh, I don't know. It was a really good, good experience. Like everything that could have gone right, went right. Nothing went wrong all weekend. You know, we were almost late to a few of our shows, but you know, next time we'll get like hoverboards or scooters or whatever. And we'll fucking just ride our asses there without blowing ourselves up. Uh, anyway, the last show that, uh, Dano and I went to, uh, was called uh, the Sexy Review, uh, two X's and sexy, and it was basically like a uh, you know an another burlesque show, just a bunch of topless girls, but it was entertaining as fuck. And again, there was a hostess who did fucking stand up comedy halfway through it. This bitch was hilarious, and she was just picking on all the guys. And like, there's this poor dude from Jamaica who came to Vegas for vacation, they got his ass on the, on the stage, and they gave him the bachelor treatment, you know, 14 girls shoving their asses in his face, and his poor wife's just sitting there laughing her ass off, and every single one of us were just giggling, it was one of the best experiences of my life, and uh, I'll definitely go back to Vegas, and uh, I recommend anyone who hasn't gone, go, and uh, anything you've ever heard about Vegas is true, there's pornography all over the street, there are prostitutes and crackheads and pregnant people everywhere. There are always people trying to sell you something. Doesn't matter if it's timeshare or drugs or whatever. There's peddlers everywhere. There are panhandlers everywhere. And you will never, ever see a bar close. Alcohol is always open. Marijuana is legal there. You're going to see a bunch of people smoking dope. And, uh man, prostitution's legal there, there's hookers everywhere, um, due to the shootings a few years ago in Las Vegas, they, uh, they shut down certain areas and certain hotels so that you can't go up and down the elevators just for safety precautions, and they always have security at the elevators, I saw a, <laughs> had to be a hooker, she was a massage therapist, sorry, arguing with the, with the doorman because she couldn't get up to this dude's room in the middle of the night, 
And he was like, I'm sorry, if you don't have a room key, you're not going up there. And she was calling the dude on the phone going, they're not letting me up there. I don't know what to do. And he was like, well, I ain't coming down to get you. Uh, that was very awkward, but really funny. And, uh, yeah, so the next morning, I mean, well, I didn't sleep. I ain't gonna lie. I didn't sleep. I didn't want to miss my flight, which was at six o'clock in the morning. So I stayed up all night. I, I uh, let my girlfriend sleep and I, I stayed up all night watching the uh, fight for the part of the fighter fest event on my cell phone. And, uh, about four o'clock in the morning, I woke her up so we could get on the plane. Sam and Chelsea gave us a ride to the hood or to the airport. And, uh, we, uh, had a connecting flight in Utah and then we got on our second flight there and we were in Oklahoma city by 1 PM on Sunday. We spent the rest of the day relaxing and I'll tell you, man, it was just enough to wear you out. And if, if you ever want to go to Vegas, you don't need to be there for any more than three or four days because it's exhausting, but it was really fun. And, uh, I can't wait to go back and I'm definitely going to go back. It won't be my next vacation, but I, I'm going to Vegas again because there is still tons of shit to do. And, um, it's, it's very well worth it. And, uh, if you can go with your best friends, go with your best friends because it makes it even more fun. Uh, anyway, that was, uh, that was my weekend. And, uh, I did, uh, put something on uh, social media the other night that, uh, after this, uh, after this circulation of uh, licensing at the end of June uh, 2020 I will be taking a break from wrestling because I am getting married and I'm gonna try to buy a new house and I'm gonna definitely try to start a family soon so I will be dipping out for a little bit but that doesn't mean I'm gonna quit and that doesn't mean I'm going anywhere I'm all I'm still gonna be uh, pretty much in charge of Mid-South Wrestling Alliance in Oklahoma City for the fourth forthcoming god knows how long i'm not giving that opportunity away to anybody so if anybody's sitting there thinking drake's out completely that's not the case and i will go where i'm needed and if i'm wanted to be there for any other reason whether it be to agent or to help book or to anything like that i'll be there so you will see me you just will not see me participate in wrestling um I'm going to put my boots away for a little bit and let my body heal. It's been 11 and a half years. It'll be 12 and a half years by the time that day comes. And, um, you know, don't be, don't be upset and don't be mad or, you know, don't sit there and think that I'm done forever because, uh, everybody says that when you need a break, you should take one and don't be proud. Don't fucking feel like you're going to let anybody down. You should just take that break because your body needs that time to heal. And I feel like that little bit of time that I'll be able to take to, uh, catch up on some, you know, some rehab and some sleep and some healing will do me a lot of good so that I can be a 20 year professional wrestler rather than a 10 or 11 and then have to call it quits because I never gave myself a chance to heal. So don't worry. I'm not going anywhere. I've I had tons and tons and tons of people say, Oh, fuck that. You're not going anywhere. I'm not, I'm not going anywhere. I'm just going to take a break from taking bumps and getting hit in the head. So uh, that was my weekend, and uh, thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe if you uh, haven't already.